the alien princess cried out in agony as the Hazari soldiers brutalized her slim blue body in the darkened Zarkoth alley, their cruel laughter echoing off the dank walls, until a grizzled human marine's combat boots stepped into view, his appearance heralding their impending doom. Eric Burns despised this wretched planet and its arrogant inhabitants. The proud Hazari viewed other races, especially humans, as inferior scum. Yet they still grudgingly employed Eric, a lone ex-Marine security contractor, to train their military forces in the lethal human combat skills that had ravaged their armies in the recent war. The veteran only tolerated this hellhole to fund his mother's critical medical treatments back on Earth. But as he made his way home from the training grounds that evening, the sounds of a vicious beating drew him into a dank alley. To his shock, five burly Hazari soldiers were mercilessly pummeling a cowering young Hazari female. Without hesitation, Eric launched himself at the attackers, his lightning-quick strikes and raw ferocity overwhelming them. He efficiently neutralized each assailant with brutal precision. Chests caved in, limbs snapped, and blood sprayed as his expert blows found their marks. In seconds it was over. Panting, Eric got his first clear look at their target. She was clearly highborn, judging from her fine clothes, now torn and bloodstained. The battered woman hesitantly introduced herself as Wren, princess of the Hazari royal family. Eric reeled as Wren revealed that her own brother, Prince Azakar, had sent his guard to murder her, clearing his path to seize the Hazari throne. Azakar, who despised humans even more than most Hazari, now had added incentive to bury Eric for interfering. With Azakar's kill teams closing in, Wren desperately begged for Eric's protection and aid in escaping, promising rich rewards. He reluctantly agreed, realizing he had just painted a galaxy-sized bullseye on his own back. As the fugitive pair raced through shadowy streets, Imperial patrol craft scoured the city, searchlights blazing. Azakar's enraged voice blasted from loudspeakers, offering a fortune for their capture, dead or alive. Eric grimly calculated their odds. If caught, Wren was a pampered royal facing certain death. But for a rugged human marine, even worse fates than death awaited if those vengeful Hazari got their claws on him. Herrick and Wren wove through the shadowed backstreets of Zarkoth's capital, ducking into alleyways and slinking through narrow passages between crumbling tenements. Eric led them deeper into the city's gritty underbelly, to a sector where even the Hazari soldiers rarely ventured. He stopped before a decrepit apartment block, its façade pitted and stained. This place is a shithole, but it's a shithole with a room nobody knows about, Eric muttered, guiding Wren inside and up several flights of stairs. He ushered her into a Spartan studio, bolting the door behind them. As Wren sank onto a threadbare couch, wincing, she began to explain. My father, the emperor, he's dying. Azakar assumed he would take the throne, but father chose me as his successor. Eric raised an eyebrow as he rummaged for medical supplies, thought Hazari had a no-girls-allowed policy for rulers. Correct. Father's decision violated centuries of tradition. Azakar was furious. He... Ah! Wren gasped as Eric peeled back her blood-soaked top, revealing deep purple contusions mottling her torso. Shit! Eric hissed. The bruising pattern indicated severe internal bleeding. He'd seen it before in marines pulverized by shrapnel. Wren needed a hospital, fast. But Azakar's goons would be watching. Your shitbag brother really did a number on you. Wren gritted her teeth as Eric applied pressure bandages. Her words came in pained bursts. Azakar will kill me. He can't claim the throne until he does. I must get off Zarkoth, gather loyal forces to stop his coup. Eric... Please, I need your help. Eric's jaw clenched. He knew a human smuggler, a guy who could slip them off-world. But making contact would be a flare for Azakar's troops. As if on cue, booted feet thundered up the stairwell outside, Hazari voices barking orders to search the building. Eric peered at Wren's ashen face, her labored breathing. She wouldn't last much longer without proper medical care. Stealing himself, Eric wrenched open a floorboard, 
revealing a cache of weapons and supplies. Grabbing a plasma cutter, he sliced a hole in the floor. Shouts of alarm erupted as Azakar's soldiers kicked in the door, but Eric and Ren were already dropping into the apartment below. They burst out into the corridor in a hail of blaster fire, Ren clinging to Eric as they fought their way down and out of the building. Plasma bolts sizzled past as they pelted through the streets. Eric could feel Ren flagging, leaving a trail of violet blood. His hand shook as he punched in the comm code for his smuggler contact. It was a massive risk broadcasting their location, but hearing Ren's ragged gasps, Eric knew her life depended on this call connecting. If the smuggler didn't pick up, Ren wouldn't see the sunrise. The comm line crackled with static before a gruff voice barked, Burns, that you? Goddamn, you've really stepped in it this time. Deckard, Eric growled. I've got no time for your shit. I need an evac now. The princess is critical. For the foot, fine. Meet me at the old Zarkoth Heavy Industries plant in the Rukoth district, and you'd better have my credits ready. Eric didn't waste breath on a reply, killing the link. Slinging one of Wren's limp arms over his shoulder, he half-carried half dragged her through the grimy alleys as her blood left a glistening violet trail. Overhead, the whine of Hazari patrol craft grew louder, searchlights stabbing down into the murky streets. Eric ducked into doorways and alcoves, his heart pounding each time the beams swept past. Wren's breaths came in short, shallow gasps, her face ashen. After an eternity of nerve-shredding evasion, the crumbling ruins of the abandoned Zarkoth Heavy Industries complex loomed out of the shadows. Eric stumbled through a rusted door, Ren a dead weight against him. Deckard, Eric called hoarsely. Deckard, where are you? His voice died as he rounded a corner. Deckard lay propped against a decaying wall, his cybernetic left arm a sparking ruin, ending in a ragged stump. His remaining hand clutched a blackened hole in his abdomen, his breaths coming in wet, rattling chokes. Burns! Deckard coughed, blood flecking his lips. Azakar's goons ambushed me, ripped the location from my cortex before I could fry it. Eric's gut turned to ice. When? Minutes ago and they'll be here. Any second. Deckard's voice faded as his eye, the one that was still organic, glazed over. Eric's mind raced. Scenarios and tactics flashing through his adrenaline-sharpened thoughts. His gaze fell on an access panel on the far wall, its interface still blinking with residual power. Easing Wren to the floor, he crossed to the panel in two quick strides, his fingers flying over the controls. The factory's security systems were laughably outdated, the software crumbling under his digital assault. With a low hum, the derelict turret studding the compound word to life, servos creaking with disuse. Eric allowed himself a tight, mirthless smile as he calibrated the targeting parameters. These automated guns were designed for a bygone age when corporations waged open war on each other. They couldn't distinguish between Hazari and human biosignatures, but he could change that. A series of dull thuds echoed from outside, dropships offloading troops. Eric hefted Wren in his arms, making for the relative shelter of the loading dock. He'd barely crossed the threshold when the staccato bark of turret fire split the air, interspersed with the shrieks of shredded Hazari. Using the distraction, Eric sprinted across the loading area, Wren jostling limply against him. There in the shadows, the angular bulk of Deckard's ship sat, its cloaking field shimmering faintly. A plasma bolt sizzled past Eric's ear, close enough to sear his skin, he spun, instinctively angling his body to shield Wren, striding into the loading bay, flanked by a phalanx of guards in the purple and gold of the royal house, was Azakar. The prince was battered, his once immaculate uniform torn and scorched, his face a mask of rage. You! he snarled, leveling his plasma pistol at Eric. You think you can defy me? I'll enjoy flaying the skin from your bones, human. Eric's shoulder exploded in agony, as Azakar's next shot found its mark, sending him crashing to the ferrocrete. Wren tumbled from his arms, her breathing shallow and erratic. Through a haze of pain, Eric saw Azakar step closer, a cruel sneer twisting his features. And as for you, dear sister, the prince hissed, 
I'll keep you alive just long enough to see my coronation before I gut you myself. Rage, white hot and pure, surged through Eric's veins. This arrogant, preening, sadistic bastard had tortured his own sister, had killed Deckard, had threatened everything Eric held dear. With a roar that was equal parts pain and fury, Eric launched himself at Azakar, ignoring the fire blossoming in his shoulder. The prince caught off guard, stumbled back, his shot going wide. Eric was among the guards before they could react. A whirlwind of savage strikes and brutal takedowns. He smashed throats, shattered knees, crushed eye sockets with a ruthless efficiency born of a lifetime of warfare. Azaka scrambled backwards, eyes wide with sudden fear as his guards crumpled around him. He fumbled for his pistol, but Eric was faster. One lightning-quick strike knocked the weapon from the prince's grip. A second slammed him to the ground, Eric's knee pinning his chest as blow after blow crashed into his face. Eric didn't stop until Azakar was a mewling, semi-conscious wreck. Staggering to his feet, he gathered Ren in his arms, lurching into Deckard's ship as fresh waves of Hazari troops poured into the compound. His vision greying at the edges, Eric slumped into the pilot's chair, laying Ren across the console. With trembling, blood-slicked fingers, he initiated the launch sequence, the engines humming to life. Eric's head lolled back as the ship screamed upwards, the nauseating lurch of a random jump to light speed roiling his stomach. As the blackness rushed in to claim him, the last thing he saw was the slow rise and fall of Ren's chest and the glittering expanse of unknown stars stretching out before them. Eric jolted awake, the shrill of alarms tearing through his hazy consciousness. Ignoring the searing pain in his scorched shoulder, he lurched to the cockpit, steadying himself against the bulkheads as the deck bucked beneath his feet. The viewscreen showed a roiling sea of green, the ship plummeting through an atmosphere thick with clouds. Warnings flashed across the console, the autopilot unresponsive, likely fried by the Hazari plasma barrage. Herrick wrenched the control yoke, wrestling against the planet's gravitational pull. The ship knifed through the dense jungle canopy, branches scraping against the hull with a shriek of tortured metal. With a bone-jarring crunch, the vessel slammed into the ground, plowing a deep gouge through the undergrowth. Eric's head cracked against the console, stars bursting across his vision. As the ship groaned to a halt, Eric staggered to his feet, his first thought of Wren. He found her strapped into the medbay's auto-dock, still unconscious but breathing, her face pale beneath the mottled bruises. Knowing her internal injuries were beyond the autodoc's capabilities, Eric began ransacking the wrecked ship for supplies, stuffing anything useful into a salvaged rucksack, medkits, ration packs, a hand comp, his plasma rifle. As he worked, a shard of memory surfaced, his blood running cold. The nav charts glimpsed in the chaos of their escape had shown this planet as Merketh, a name spoken in hushed whispers by spacers, a death world quarantined by the Galactic Council. Eric had heard the stories, of the ferocious beasts that roamed its jungles, of the strange energy storms that made escape impossible, of the explorers who ventured there, never to be seen again. And now he and Wren were stranded here, the ship damaged beyond repair, no way to call for help. Eric's jaw clenched. They had escaped Azakar's clutches, but they might have just fled into the jaws of an even deadlier fate. Pushing aside his mounting dread, Eric fashioned a crude stretcher from torn hull plating and webbing, gently shifting Wren onto it. Slinging his rifle over one shoulder and hoisting the stretcher's handles, he set out into the alien jungle, the towering trees swallowing them within moments. As he pushed deeper into the foreboding wilderness, an unsettling chorus arose. Guttural howls, hissing screeches, the snap of twigs beneath unseen feet. Eric's combat-honed senses prickled, warning him they were being watched, hunted. A grating shriek cut the air, a nightmarish shape hurtling from the undergrowth. A glistening reptilian beast, all tooth and claw, its maw dripping with steaming venom. Eric reacted on instinct, his rifle snapping up, a burst of plasma searing into the creature's skull. He placed himself between Wren and the advancing horrors, his heart pounding, his breath coming in short rasps. He was one man, battered and bleeding, 
armed with a knife and a half-charged rifle. But as the beasts lunged all fang and fury, Eric met their charge with a roar of his own, determined to carve a path to survival through Merketh's abominations. He was human, a son of Earth, and he'd be damned if he let Wren fall to these monsters. Primal savagery clashed with human tenacity, as Eric threw himself at the nightmares made flesh, his blade flashing, his rifle thundering. The jungle echoed with the sounds of their mortal struggle, the human will to endure pitted against the merciless brutality of a hostile world. Eric's knife dripped with viscous green ichor as the second beast's corpse thudded to the ground. His chest heaved, adrenaline still surging through his veins. But as the rush of battle faded, the searing pain of his wounds hit him like a plasma bolt. Deep gashes scored his chest and thigh, his blood mingling with the creatures on the jungle floor. Gritting his teeth, Eric staggered to where Wren lay, her breathing shallow. He couldn't carry her, not in this state. His gaze darted around the clearing, seeking refuge, and landed on a narrow fissure in the rock face nearby. A cave. Gathering Wren in his arms, ignoring the white-hot agony lancing through his muscles, Eric stumbled towards the opening. Inside, the air was cool and damp, a welcome respite from the jungle's oppressive heat. He laid Wren down gently. Tearing strips from his sweat-soaked shirt, Eric set about dressing their wounds. As he wrapped a makeshift bandage around his thigh, Wren stirred, a low moan escaping her lips. Eric, her voice was thin, strained. Wren's eyes fluttered open, taking in the cave's rocky confines, the blood seeping through Eric's bandages. Realization dawned in her gaze. Merka, she whispered, I know this place, the legends. A great warrior exiled here long ago. He survived, found a temple deep in the jungle, inside technology of the ancients, able to heal any wound. A spark of hope kindled in Eric's chest. If such a place existed, it might be their only chance. He met Wren's eyes, saw the unspoken plea within. The days bled together as they forged through the undergrowth, the temple their guiding star. Vines clutched at their legs, thorns tore at their skin. They scavenged what meager sustenance they could, bitter roots, brackish water collected in cupped leaves. As they walked, they talked, the hardships forging a bond between them. Eric found himself opening up, sharing stories of his past, his hopes for a future beyond war. In turn, Wren spoke of her life on Zarkoth, the weight of a crown she'd never wanted. One night, huddled around a flickering fire, Wren revealed the truth behind Azakar's betrayal, the secret pact with the Kralthok, the insectoid hordes poised to descend upon her unsuspecting people. I was on my way to warn my father when Azakar's blades found me, she murmured, her voice hollow. Now the truth dies with us on this forsaken world. Eric reached out, his hand finding hers in the darkness. We're not dead yet. But as the days stretched into weeks, their strength waning with each step, that certainty began to falter. Until, through the thinning trees, Eric spotted a glint of stone. His pulse quickened. They emerged into a clearing, ancient ruins rising before them. Vine-choked pillars flanked a crumbling stairway, leading up to a massive stone edifice, a temple lost to the ages. Wren sagged against him, her eyes alight with renewed hope. We found it. Together they climbed the weathered steps, the jungle's shroud falling away. The temple loomed above, its secrets waiting within. But as they neared the threshold, a deep, guttural growl froze the blood in Eric's veins. Something stirred in the shadows of the colonnade, something huge and ancient and full of malice. Eric's hand tightened on his knife's hilt as a pair of yellow eyes flashed in the dark. They had reached their destination, but the true trial was only beginning. Eric's grip on his knife tightened as the malice-filled eyes glinted in the temple's gloom. Azakar stepped forward, the Kralthok warriors close behind, their weapons trained on the exhausted human and Hazari. I must admit I'm impressed, Azakar sneered. I never thought you'd make it this far, but your little adventure ends here.
Wren staggered to her feet, defiant despite her wounds. How did you find us? Hezekar's laugh echoed off the ancient walls. Did you really think I wouldn't have a tracking device planted on my dear sister? I've been monitoring your every move since you fled Zarkoth. Eric's mind raced, calculating their odds. They were outgunned and outnumbered, their only hope the mysterious device pulsing behind them. Enough talk, Azakar snarled. Hand over the device and I might grant you a quick death. Eric and Ren exchanged a glance, a silent understanding passing between them. They had come too far, endured too much to surrender now. In a burst of desperate speed, Eric lunged for the nearest Krauthok, his blade finding a chink in its chitinous armor. The warrior shrieked, Ikor spurting from the wound as its companions opened fire. Plasma bolts sizzled through the air as Eric and Ren dove for cover behind the strange machines. The ancient relics shuddered under the onslaught, fragments of unknown alloys flying. Ren, her hand pressed to her bleeding side, crawled to the control panel of the device. Her fingers flew over the alien glyphs, urgency lending her strength. Cover me, she gasped. I think I can activate it. Eric nodded grimly, popping up from behind a shattered console to snap off a few shots at the advancing Kralthok. Two went down, smoking holes in their carapaces, but more poured in from the temple's depths. A searing pain lanced through Eric's leg as a plasma bolt found its mark. He gritted his teeth, forcing himself to stay upright to keep fighting. Suddenly a blinding blue light filled the chamber. The healing device hummed to life, tendrils of energy snaking out to envelop Eric and Wren. Eric felt the pain in his leg fade, the wound knitting itself closed. Beside him the color returned to Wren's cheeks, her injuries vanishing before his eyes. But Azakar was undeterred. With a roar of rage he charged forward, a crackling energy blade in hand. His Kralthok warriors surged after him, a chittering tide of death. Revitalized by the device's healing touch, Eric and Ren met their charge head-on. Plasma fire mingled with the hum of energy blades, the clash of human tenacity, and Hazari cunning against Kralthok's savagery. In the chaos of battle, Eric lost sight of Ren. He could only trust in her strength in the bond they had forged through shared hardship as he faced down the seemingly endless horde. Azakar loomed before him, his face a twisted mask of hatred. The prince's blade slashed down, a blur of searing light. Eric barely managed to deflect the blow, his own knife glancing off Azakar's armor. The two locked in a deadly dance, blades flashing, as the battle raged around them. Eric's muscles burned with effort, but he refused to yield. Too much was at stake. Ren's life, the fate of the Hazari, the balance of power in the galaxy. With a final desperate lunge, Eric drove his knife into Azakar's chest, feeling the blade scrape against bone. The prince's eyes widened in shock, his energy blade clattering to the ground. But even as Azakar fell, the Kralthok kept coming, a relentless tide of claws and fangs, Eric fought on, his blood singing with the thrill of battle, the ancient device's energy coursing through his veins. And then, through the press of bodies, he saw her, Wren, her eyes aglow with the same unearthly light, a Kralthok blade in each hand. She moved like a tempest, a whirlwind of death, cutting down the insectoid warriors with a savage grace. Their eyes met across the battlefield, a moment of perfect understanding. They were more than just survivors now, more than just a human and a Hazari thrown together by fate. They were a team, forged in the crucible of Merketh's trials, bound by a purpose greater than themselves. Together they would stand against the darkness, a light in the void. Together they would shape the destiny of worlds. The battle raged on, the temple's ancient walls shuddering with the fury of their struggle. But in that moment, Standing back to back amidst the chaos, Eric and Wren knew that they had already won something far more precious than any victory. They had found each other, and in a galaxy full of danger and uncertainty that was enough. The Krauthok pressed in from all sides, a seething mass of razor-sharp mandibles and barbed limbs. Eric's knife flashed, green ichor splattering his face as he opened the throat of one warrior, only to have two more take its place. 
Ren was a blur of motion at his back, the hum of her stolen blades mingling with the shrieks of dying Kralthok. But even with the ancient device's power surging through them, they couldn't hold out forever. There's too many, Ren shouted over the din of battle, her voice strained. We need to fall back, find a choke point. Eric grunted his agreement, droplets of sweat and blood stinging his eyes. Scanning the chamber, his gaze landed on a narrow corridor leading deeper into the temple, its entrance partially obscured by fallen rubble. There, he pointed with a gore-streaked hand. We'll bottleneck them, pick them off one by one. They fought their way to the corridor, step by blood-soaked step, leaving a trail of twitching Kralthok bodies in their wake. Eric reached the entrance first, turning to cover Wren as she limped behind, favouring her freshly healed leg. A plasma bolt sizzled past Eric's ear, close enough to singe his hair. He returned fire, his shots going wide as a Kralthok barreled into him, knocking him to the ground. Jagged mandibles snapped inches from his face, dripping with noxious saliva. Eric struggled against the warrior's crushing weight, his knife hand pinned, his ribs creaking under the strain. Suddenly the Kralthok jerked, a gurgling hiss escaping its maw. It slumped forward, Ren's humming blade protruding from the back of its skull. I had it under control, Eric panted as Ren helped him to his feet, a wry grin tugging at the corner of her mouth. Of course you did, she replied, her tone light despite the direness of their situation. But I couldn't let you have all the fun. Together they backed into the corridor, Eric scooping up a fallen Kralthok plasma rifle to replace his depleted sidearm. The weapon was unwieldy in his hands, designed for inhuman appendages, but it would have to do. The Kralthok surged after them, their chittering rising to a fever pitch as they squeezed into the narrow passage. Eric and Ren met them with a hail of plasma fire and flashing blades, the close quarters turning the fight into a brutal, intimate melee. Daikor splattered the walls, mixing with human and Hazari blood on the ancient stone. Krauthok bodies piled up, forming a twitching, oozing barricade that their comrades clambered over in their frenzy to reach the intruders. Eric's arms burned with the effort of swinging the cumbersome rifle, each shot tearing through chitin and flesh. Beside him, Ren was a whirlwind of steel, her blades finding gaps in the Kralthok's natural armor with uncanny precision. But for every warrior they felled, two more seemed to take its place, an endless tide of fangs and claws. Eric's heart pounded in his ears, his breath coming in ragged gasps. They couldn't keep this up, not even with the ancient device's energy pulsing through their veins. Just as despair began to creep in, a shudder ran through the temple, dust raining down from the ceiling. The Kralthok paused in their assault, their antennae twitching in confusion. A deep, resonant hum filled the air, growing louder with each passing second. The walls began to vibrate, ancient mechanisms stirring to life deep within the structure. Herrick and Wren exchanged a glance, hope and trepidation mingling in their eyes. The temple was awakening, but to what end? A blinding flash erupted from the far end of the corridor, a wave of searing energy that washed over the Kralthok horde. Chitin blackened and flesh sloughed from bones as the warriors were reduced to ash in an instant, their dying shrieks echoing off the walls. Eric and Ren stood untouched amidst the carnage, the ancient device's power shielding them from the temple's wrath. As the light faded, they saw a figure striding towards them through the smoke and swirling ash. It was the hologram from before, its form more solid now, more real. It towered over them, its features inscrutable, its eyes glowing with an otherworldly light. You have proven yourselves worthy, it intoned, its voice a rumble that seemed to come from everywhere at once. The legacy of our people is yours to claim. Eric and Wren stood shoulder to shoulder, battered but unbroken, as they faced this emissary of a long-dead race. The ancient temple thrummed with power around them, a promise of secrets yet to be uncovered, of a destiny yet to be fulfilled. Together they had survived the trials of Mirketh. Together they had defeated Azakar and his Kralthok allies. And together they would face whatever challenges lay ahead, armed with the knowledge and power of the ancients. The hologram beckoned to them, a portal shimmering to life behind it. 
Beyond lay a chamber bathed in soft, pulsing light, filled with devices and technologies beyond their wildest imaginings. Eric reached out, his hand finding Wren's. She laced her fingers with his, her grip strong and sure. As one, they stepped forward, ready to embrace the future, to carve their names in the stars. The portal swallowed them, and the temple faded away, a relic of a bygone age. But the story of Eric and Wren, the human and the Hazari, who had defied the odds and reshaped the galaxy, was only just beginning. Azakar's mocking laughter echoed off the ancient walls as he strode into the chamber, the Kraltok warriors fanning out behind him. Did you really think you could escape me? My Kraltok allies have technology far beyond anything your primitive human mind can comprehend. Eric stepped in front of Wren, shielding her with his body. How did you find us? Foolish human, Azakar sneered. I tracked your crash site and followed your trail. The temple's defenses were child's play for the Kraltok to bypass. The prince's gaze shifted to the pulsing device behind them, a hungry gleam in his eyes. And now the key to galactic domination is within my grasp. Her insane, Wren spat, her fists clenched at her sides. The device is meant for healing, not conquest. Hazakar threw his head back and laughed, the sound grating and cruel. Oh, dear sister, your naivety amuses me. With this device I will create an army of unstoppable Kralthok super-soldiers, each one capable of regenerating from even the most grievous wounds. I will seize control of the Hazari Empire and unleash a conquering swarm upon the galaxy. As Azakar moved towards the device, Eric and Wren sprang into action. Plasma bolts sizzled through the air as they engaged the Kralthok warriors, the chamber erupting into chaos. Eric fought like a man possessed. His human tenacity and skill pitted against the Kralthok's raw strength and numbers. He ducked and weaved, his plasma rifle spitting blue fire, each shot finding its mark in chitinous flesh. Beside him, Wren held her own against the insectoid warriors, her quick wit and agility proving a match for their brute force. She snatched up a fallen Kralthok blade, the razor-sharp edge slicing through exoskeletons like paper. As the battle raged on, Eric spotted an opportunity, a flickering weakness in the ancient device's shielding. If they could overload its systems... Vresen, he shouted over the din of combat. The device, we need to sabotage it. Understanding dawned in Wren's eyes. She gave him a sharp nod, then charged forward, drawing the Kralthox fire. Eric seized the opening, racing towards the device's control panel. His fingers flew over the alien interface, searching for the vulnerability he'd seen. Just as Wren reached the device, Azakar broke through Eric's defenses. The prince's plasma blade flashed, slicing deep into Eric's side. Agony exploded through him as he fell, his blood splattering the ancient stone. Eric! Wren screamed, abandoning the controls and rushing to his side. She cradled his head in her lap her eyes wide with fear as the chamber began to shake and crumble around them. Azaka, seeing his chance, let out a roar of fury and charged towards the failing device, determined to claim its power even as it tore itself apart. Wren threw herself over Eric as the device exploded in a blinding flash of energy. Ancient stone and twisted metal rained down around them, the temple shuddering and collapsing. And that's your more silence, broken only by the distant cries of Merketh's creatures echoing through the ruined halls. Wren clawed her way out of the temple's ruins, dust and debris raining down around her. Her lungs burned, her body ached, but her mind was laser-focused on one thing, finding Eric. She staggered through the rubble, tossing aside chunks of stone and twisted metal, her heart pounding in her ears. A weak groan caught her attention, she scrambled towards the sound, ignoring the sharp pain in her limbs. There, half buried beneath a slab of ancient masonry, lay Eric. His face was ashen, his breathing shallow, but he was alive. Wren fell to her knees beside him, tears of relief stinging her eyes. She checked his wound, finding it severe but not immediately fatal. With Azakar and his Kralthok minions dead, they had a chance, if they could reach the ship. Using the plasma cutter, Wren fashioned a crude stretcher from the remnants of the temple's support beams. She eased Eric onto it, 
securing him as best she could. Then, with a grunt of effort, she hoisted the stretcher and set off into the jungle, the weight of her burden matched only by the weight of her resolve. As she trudged through the undergrowth, Ren's thoughts raced. With Azakar gone, there was a chance to expose his treachery, to warn her people of the looming Kralthok threat, but first she had to get Eric to safety, to find a way off this hellish planet. The days blurred together as Ren pushed onwards, stopping only to tend to Eric's wounds and forage for meagre sustenance. The jungle's predators stalked them at every turn, drawn by the scent of blood and weakness. Ren fended them off with makeshift spears and the last dregs of power in Eric's rifle, each confrontation leaving her more battered and drained. Ren nearly wept at the sight of the battered hull, the promise of salvation it represented. She half-dragged, half-carried Eric inside, laying him down on a makeshift bed of torn seat cushions. With trembling fingers, she activated the ship's distress beacon, praying to God she scarcely believed in that its signal would reach friendly ears. She tended to Eric as best she could with the ship's meagre medical supplies, her heart clenching each time he stirred or mumbled in his delirium. As the hours stretched into days, Wren fortified their position, setting traps and barricades against the jungle's relentless predators. She sat by Eric's side, listening as he murmured fragments of his past, his childhood on the streets of Earth, his years in the Marines, the battles and losses that had forged him into the man he was. With each passing day, Wren's admiration for Eric's strength and resilience grew. He had saved her life, risked everything for a cause that wasn't his own. And as she smoothed the sweat-soaked hair from his brow, she silently vowed to do the same for him. On the fifth day, just as despair began to creep in, a shadow fell across the crash site. Wren looked up, her heart leaping as she saw the Hazari battlecruiser hanging in the sky above, a shuttle detached from its belly, descending towards their position. Wren staggered out of the wreckage, waving her arms in desperate welcome. But as the shuttle touched down and its ramp lowered, her relief turned to icy dread. The figures that emerged wore the colours of Azakar's guard, their weapons trained on her. Their leader, a grizzled Hazari commander, stepped forward. Princess Wren, he growled, by order of the Hazari High Council, you are under arrest for treason and the murder of Prince Azakar. Surrender now, or face the consequences. Wren's mind raced. If Azakar's conspirators still held power, she couldn't trust the council. They would silence her, bury the truth of Azakar's betrayal. Wren turned to face the Hazari soldiers, her stance defiant. I will not surrender to traitors and murderers, she declared. I will fight for the truth, for my people, no matter the cost. As the soldiers advanced, Wren reached for her makeshift spear, Eric struggling to rise behind her. They would make their final stand here, on this distant, savage world. They would fight, not just for their own lives, but for the fate of the Hazari, for the very soul of the galaxy. As the Hazari commander's troops closed in, weapons leveled at Wren and Eric, the roar of engines split the air. A sleek shuttle, emblazoned with the Emperor's personal sigil, descended from the battle cruiser above, kicking up a maelstrom of dust and debris as it touched down between the battered fugitives and their would-be captors. The soldiers froze, eyes wide with shock as the shuttle's ramp hissed open, revealing a phalanx of elite Hazari warriors, their armor gleaming in the harsh light of Merketh's sun. At their head strode a figure that made even the hardened veterans quail, Emperor Zalax himself his regal bearing unmistakable. Wren, her legs trembling with exhaustion and relief, watched as her father approached, his eyes filled with a mix of worry and pride. Without a word, he wrapped her in a fierce embrace, his strong arms chasing away the terror and despair of the past days. Azalax pulled back, his hands resting on her shoulders. I had my suspicions about Azakar's activities, when my agents uncovered proof of his treachery, his alliance with the Kraltok. I knew I had to find you, that you were the key to stopping this madness. Wren nodded, tears streaking her dust-stained face. Eric and I, we discovered Azakar's plot. We barely escaped Zarkoth with our lives. He saved me, father. More times than I can count. 
Zalax turned his gaze to Eric, the human leaning heavily against the ruined ship, his face ashen beneath the blood and grime. With a gesture, the Emperor summoned his personal medics, who rushed forward to tend to the wounded warrior. As Eric was carried into the waiting shuttle, Zalax rounded on the Hazari commander, his eyes blazing with cold fury. You and your men will stand down and submit to questioning. I will root out every last one of Azakar's conspirators and see them face justice for their crimes. The commander, his face pale, could only nod in acquiescence. Wren followed her father into the shuttle, a protective ring of guards closing around them. As the craft lifted off, she took one last look at the jungle that had nearly claimed their lives, her hand finding Eric's and holding tight. In the days that followed, as Eric recuperated in the battlecruiser's medbay, Wren worked tirelessly at her father's side to expose the full extent of Azakar's betrayal. The evidence they uncovered sent shockwaves through the Hazari hierarchy, and soon the full might of the Empire was mobilizing to face the looming Kralthok threat. Across the fleet, Eric's name was spoken with reverence, the human who had saved their princess and unmasked a traitor. Zalax himself offered the soldier a place of honor among his advisers, a gesture of gratitude and respect. And so, as the Hazari Armada surged forth to meet the oncoming storm, Wren and Eric stood together on the flagship's bridge, the bond forged in Merketh's crucible now unbreakable. Two warriors, human and Hazari, ready to lead the charge against the greatest threat their galaxy had ever faced. The first salvo of Kralthok plasma fire slammed into the flagship's shields, the deck shuddering beneath their feet. Wren's hand tightened on the hilt of her blade, her eyes narrowing as the monstrous silhouettes of the enemy dreadnoughts loomed on the view screen. This is it, she murmured, her voice steady despite the aching fear in her gut. The fate of the Hazari of every free race in the galaxy hangs in the balance. Eric nodded, his jaw set, the scars of Merketh still fresh on his skin. We'll face it together, he said, his gaze locking with hers, no matter what comes. Around them, the bridge erupted into controlled chaos, officers barking orders, weapon systems thrumming to life. The Hazari fleet surged forward, a glittering spearhead aimed at the heart of the Kralthok horde. And at its tip, Wren and Eric stood united, a human and a Hazari, two souls forged in the fires of adversity, ready to light the spark of hope in the gathering darkness. The Hazari flagship shuddered under the relentless onslaught of the Kralthok armada, its shields flickering as plasma bolts slammed into the hull. On the bridge, Wren and Eric stood side by side, their faces grim, their eyes locked on the tactical display. We're losing ground, Wren murmured, her fingers flying over the console as she redirected power to the failing shields. The Kraltok are pushing us back. Eric nodded, his jaw set. But we're not beaten yet. The tech we salvaged from Merketh is our ace in the hole. He turned to the weapons officer, a grizzled Hazari veteran. Prepare to deploy the quantum resonance torpedoes, target their command ships. The officer nodded, his fingers dancing across his console, torpedoes armed and ready. Wren's hand found Eric's, her grip tight. Together. Together, Eric affirmed, his thumb brushing over her knuckles. Fire! Their volley of shimmering projectiles erupted from the Hazari flagship, streaking towards the Kraltok fleet. The insectoid ships attempted to evade, but the torpedoes, guided by the ancient temple's advanced targeting systems, followed their every move. The quantum warheads detonated in a cascade of blinding flashes, ripping through the Kralthok shields, as if they were paper. Command ships shattered and broke apart, their hulls twisting and warping under the onslaught. A cheer went up from the Hazari crew as the Kralthok line faltered, their formation crumbling. Wren and Eric exchanged a triumphant glance, their combined tactics and unwavering determination turning the tide of battle. But their victory was short-lived. The Kralthok, in a final desperate gambit, unleashed their most devastating weapon. A swarm of bioengineered spores burst from the ruins of a shattered dreadnought, propelled towards the Hazari fleet by the explosions. 
Alarms blared as the spores breached the flagship's hull, bypassing the shields as if they weren't even there. Reports flooded in from across the ship, crew members collapsing, their bodies racked by violent convulsions, their skin erupting in grotesque, pulsating growths. Ren paled as she realized the true nature of the weapon, a plague designed to turn the Hazari against each other. She opened her mouth to order a quarantine, but her words were cut off by a sudden searing pain in her chest. She looked down to see a sickly green tendril snaking out from beneath her armor, its barbed tip dripping with viscous fluid. The plague spore, having found its way inside during the chaos of battle, was already taking root in her body. Eric, his eyes widening in horror, caught Ren as she stumbled, her legs giving way beneath her. He held her close, his mind racing, searching for a solution, a way to save her from the insidious infection. The Kralthok flagship, Ren gasped, her breath coming in ragged bursts. They must have an antidote, it's the only way... Eric's face hardened with resolve. He gently lowered Ren into the command chair, his hand brushing her cheek. I'll find it, he promised, his voice rough with emotion. I'll save you, no matter what it takes. Ignoring the protests of the bridge crew, Eric sprinted from the room, his mind focused on a single desperate plan. He would infiltrate the Kralthok flagship, battle through their defenses, and find the cure for the woman he loved, even if it meant sacrificing his own life. As he raced towards the hangar bay, Eric's thoughts were a maelstrom of fear, determination, and a love that burned brighter than any star. He would save Wren, or die trying. There was no other choice, not for him, not any more. Herrick's boots pounded against the deck plates as he sprinted through the Hazari flagship's corridors, alarms blaring in his ears, the ship shuddering under the unrelenting Kralthok assault. Crew members, their faces contorted in pain and fear, stumbled past him, the bioengineered plague ravaging their bodies. He burst into the hangar bay, his eyes locking onto a sleek, deadly-looking Hazari assault shuttle. Its angular hull bristled with weapons, its engines humming with barely restrained power. Perfect for a one-man infiltration mission. Eric clambered into the cockpit, his fingers flying over the controls with a speed born of desperation. The shuttle roared to life, its thrusters flaring as it lifted off the deck and shot out into the chaos of the battle. Plasma bolts and debris filled the void, the wreckage of shattered ships tumbling in all directions. Eric wove through the maelstrom, his jaw clenched, his eyes fixed on his target, the massive pulsating bulk of the Kralthok flagship. The insectoid dreadnought loomed ahead, its chitin-plated hull bristling with spines and writhing tentacles. Eric gripped the controls tighter, his knuckles whitening, as he angled the shuttle towards a gaping fissure in the ship's side, a wound torn open by the Hazari torpedoes. The shuttle plunged into the breach, its shields flaring as it scraped against jagged edges of shattered chitin. Eric gritted his teeth as the craft shuddered and bucked, warning lights flashing across the console. With a bone-jarring crunch, the shuttle slammed into the deck of a cavernous hangar bay, skidding to a halt amidst a shower of sparks and twisted metal. Eric, his head ringing from the impact, kicked open the hatch and leaped out, plasma rifle in hand. A swarm of Kralthok warriors, their compound eyes glittering with malevolent intelligence, surged towards him, their razor-sharp claws extending from chitinous arms. Eric met their charge with a roar of defiance, his rifle spitting searing bolts of energy into their midst. Chitin cracked and Ikor sprayed as the plasma bolts found their marks the Kralthok warriors screeching in pain and fury. But for every insectoid he felled, two more took its place, a seemingly endless tide of claws and mandibles. Herrick fought like a man possessed, his movements a blur of deadly precision. He ducked and weaved, his rifle thrumming in his hands, his combat knife flashing out to sever grasping limbs and pierce compound eyes. But even as he battled through the Kralthok horde, his mind was fixed on a single all-consuming thought. Wren, her body ravaged by the bioengineered plague, her life hanging in the balance. He had to find the antidote, had to save her, no matter the cost. With a final desperate surge, Eric broke through the Kralthok lines, leaving a trail of twitching, ichor-soaked bodies in his wake.
he sprinted deeper into the flagship, his heart pounding, his breath coming in ragged gasps, every fiber of his being focused on his desperate quest. He would find the cure, would save the woman he loved even if it meant sacrificing everything. For Ren, for the future they had dreamed of together, there was no price too high, no obstacle too great. He would triumph or die trying. There was no other way. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.